everybody. What's going on? Good to see everybody. Let me get rid of our music here for a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. Hey, everyone. Music on. Come on. There we go. Hope you're all doing well. <clears throat> Glad to see everybody. It's been a while since we've been uh, doing a live stream. Let me know if you can hear me in the chat okay. Hope you guys are doing well. Getting getting ready for uh, fall. Well, we're in fall, right? Getting ready for the holidays. Hope you all have a good summer. Hope you're all healthy and safe and your families and loved ones are healthy and safe. And uh, I thank you very much for joining me. So tonight we're going to take a listen to and just to do a comparison of sorts of the IK Multimedia tape machine collection. So there are four really cool uh, tape machine plugins that they make um, that you can buy singularly for, I think, uh, 99 bucks each, or you could buy the whole package for $1.99, which is really cool. And Dave is going to put some links in the chat to Sweetwater. You could download them directly from Sweetwater, um, and you can get them, you know, four tape machines for 200 bucks, 50 bucks a tape machine, and they're really cool. We're going to go through those tonight and check those out. And uh, hopefully you guys like those. If you like those, that's really great. So if this is your first time here at a live stream, welcome to our little group in our family. Let us know in the chat if this is your first time here. And uh, say hello to everybody. Um, if it is your first time here, you see on the screen to whatever side it is, my left, you'll see, uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, right? Make sure you subscribe to follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. There's new content going up every single day. Also too, there is what's not on the screen here. We also have a second YouTube channel for folks that are into hybrid mixing mixing uh, with uh, analog gear in a DAW. You can uh, check out Mixing Music Analog, the YouTube channel. I'm sure Dave will put that somewhere in the link in the chat sooner or later. Uh, you can check that out and subscribe over there as well. So there are two channels now that we're running simultaneously, content going up weekly on both, anywhere from two, one to two videos per channel per week. That's two to four videos a week, all for you guys between both channels. Um, and also um, our podcast is still going strong and that is got some new episodes coming up um, over the next few weeks. You guys are really going to dig that. So make sure you're subscribed to everything. Also along the bottom of the screen, if you are a Studio One user this week, well coming up next week, but I'm letting you guys in on it early, 50% off mixing in Studio One made easy, which is really cool if you are uh, use Studio One and you're into mixing with their plugins, especially their Fat Channel plugins, the Fat Channel XT, you'll really love that course. There's also a mastering module in there as well, 50% off, no coupon code needed. Dave will put that in the chat as well. So you can check out all of that stuff while you're kind of hanging out with us tonight. Um, and if you like this uh, live stream and it helps you in any way and you'd like to leave a donation, feel free to use the super chat. It does help me here so I can continue to do these things for you guys free of charge. So let's get on over to the chat and say hello to everyone and see how everybody's doing. Let me scroll back up here on my iPad. David SJ's here. Hey, Dave, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Uh, Jim is here. Hey, Jim. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Hi, Jimmy. Good to see you as well. Congratulations on your anniversary. That's really, really cool. You've been 20 years. Awesome. I just celebrated um, my 15th year and we'll be going on 16 uh, coming up in June of next year. So we're 15 and a half. So I'm not too far behind you. Uh, let's see. John Clark is here. Hey, John. How you doing? Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for coming. Let me scroll down here. Uh, Tack and Queek, first time. What's up, everyone? Hey, how are you? Oh, Track and Track Queek? Can't pronounce that, but welcome. Thanks for joining, man. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, Bobby's Bob Mixing and Mastering Service. Hey, Bob, what's up going on? Brian, hey, Brian. How you doing, brother? Good to see you as well. Um, and everyone is here. What do we got? 14 people watching. That's really, really cool. Okay, man. If anyone has, anyone has any questions while we're just getting past seven o'clock, I want to wait a couple of minutes before we jump into studio one, because people are going to come in a couple of minutes late. If you have anything you uh, want to talk about or ask or anything you uh, want to know, feel free to leave it in the chat and I'd be glad to try to help and answer any questions as always, because I'm here to help you. If you haven't seen um, all the new studio one uh, video content that I put up this week on YouTube, you ought to check that out. I did a review of the new version 5.4. Um, which is uh, really cool. I've been using it. It works pretty well. It, they fixed a few of the bugs I was having in versions 5 and 5.2. Um, also um, did a, um, a walkthrough of PreSonus Sphere. And some of you guys actually joined um, 
since uh, you saw that video. Thanks so much. I don't get anything for that, but I appreciate you guys joining. And I think if you're a PreSonus user, that PreSonus for your membership thing might be something really cool, especially if you're someone who does a lot of um, song production and music writing with VST instruments and loops and samples. I mean, it's really amazing how much stuff they're giving, you know, for 15 bucks a month, how much content you get there. It's almost insane. Um, so go check out that video. Um, if you're someone who just solely uses Studio One just for maybe mixing and you're into a lot of third party plugins and you don't use a lot of their stock plugins and you're not into song production or sound production, then PreSonosphere is probably not for you. And I mentioned that in that uh, walkthrough. Um, it's really for people that are into really songwriting and song recording. That's really what it's for. It is an enormous amount of content. So you may want to check that out. It is really cool um, as far as what they give you for the price. So go check out that video. Um, I think you guys will really dig that. And I have a whole bunch of um, Studio One specific tips and videos, tips and trick videos coming up over the next six or eight weeks. They're actually already recorded. They're already scheduled out on YouTube right through Christmas. So you guys will be getting at least one video a week if you're a Studio One user uh, with some of the new features and some of the new tools that they uh, released with 5.4. You guys might find that interesting. So that's pretty cool. So let's see. Brian says the VSC instruments are the best. Yeah, their VST stuff is really good. They give you a lot of them too. I'm really surprised how much they uh how much they give you for the money. Uh let's see. Bobby uh mixing and mastering. IK Multimedia is having your 25th anniversary sale. Oh, really cool. That's great. I just uh upgraded um to their Amplitude 5, which is amazing by the way. You know, the guitar plugin. That's probably I I, I go out on a limb to say that that's probably the best guitar software tool practice tool songwriting tool plugin i've ever seen or ever heard by a lot i mean it's really unbelievable the amount of stuff that you get um and i i think i got their full package with all the amps and all the collections and stuff i i got a um i had a bunch of ik multimedia uh rewards points and stuff and, and i bought i got the i got their like 400 dollar bundle for like 200 bucks and it's unreal the amount of stuff that they give you and the amount of flexibility that they give you. Um, and um, not only is it just all guitar stuff, but it's also got um, an eight track recording software built in, a looper built in, a phase trainer built in. It's, it's really unreal. So for guitar practice, learning, you know, instruction lessons, you know, trying to cop songs and um, you know, copy licks and learn tunes and, just getting down scratch ideas. It's amazing. You can use it um, with your DAW of choice as a plugin, or you can also use it as a standalone, which I use it as a standalone. Um, and you can record right into the plugin. Um, and there's every, every amp and pedal and it's unbelievable. You, you got to, if you're into that kind of stuff, uh, check out the IK Multimedia Amplitude 5. It's really unbelievable. Um, I'm blown away by it. I've only scratched the surface with it, but it's so much fun. Uh, trying to create all the different guitar tones. So you guys may check that out um, if you want. The, if they're having a sale, because someone said they're having a 25th anniversary sale, maybe you can get that thing at a, it, you know, at a really good price. And if you're into that, then that might be something really cool. So anywho, so that's it. What do we got? 16 people here. Okay, let's jump into Studio One. Well, we may as well jump in. Unless you guys have any questions, I'll keep my eye on the chat. Let me get my headphones on here and then I'll switch screens. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Let me get Studio One up here, and then I'll switch screens for you guys. All right, Studio One. There we go. Okay, so as I said, we are going to get. Um, we're going to look at their four, their tape machine plug-in collection. Their four tape machines. Uh, Jim's asking, Hey Jim, how are you, Dave? When would you use a mono bus over a stereo bus for what Jim? Just like as, as part of a busing system, I typically always use stereo, but, um, if you're asking like what you see on the screen here, like this particular, this little song that we use for our demos here, our drum bus is in stereo, our bass bus is in stereo, but it really could be mono cause it's a mono source going to it. The lead vocal could be mono, you know, anything that's a mono track that's going to a bus, if that's what you're asking. Um, you can use mono or you could use stereo. I typically default to stereo, but you can use mono. Um, 
But for things like drums where there's panning, anytime you have a bunch of tracks going down to a bus and there's panning involved, you want to use stereo. If everything's just straight up the middle, mono's the way to go. Does it really matter one way or the other? Uh, not really, not, not, not generally. So it could be either one. So hope that helps. I t like I said, I typically always default to stereo, but sometimes I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I'll use mono. So here we go. So the four tape machines we're going to look at. Now this is our, this is our little, our little, um, angels and amplifiers song that we use on YouTube here because it's the only thing it really, well, one of only a few that don't, um, Hey Peter, how are you, my friend? Um, that, uh, doesn't get, um, copyright claims, right? So, we, that's why we have to use it. When it works, it's a good tune. It's a small tune. There's no mix on it at all, just a static mix. I put all the tape machines on the master bus. We'll go through them. Right now, they're all in bypass mode. Here's a, a little loop of the song if you're unfamiliar with it. I know the season's about to change. Changing all around I know the reasons you arrange You're tearing me down Where is the peacefulness of mine? Where will my heart come back to life? I'm alright As I pick up the pieces that I've left in me I'm alright Feel away from you And I'll be fine at the corner, put it back in order. I know I will always have this to you. A bit of piece of you. Okay, so that's a track we're dealing with. You guys have heard that before. Uh, Peter says Studio One is very much like Cubase. Yeah, that's true. A little insider secret for people that don't know the history of Studio One. Um, Studio One, when first developed, um, part of the team that designed Studio One were actually ex-Steinberg ex engineers who designed Cubase. That's one of the reasons why it's very Cubase-esque, or at least it was It was more so Cubase-esque in the beginning. It's moved away a little bit from that over the years, but it's very Cubase-like, and that's one of the reasons, because part of the team that designed it was part of the team that designed um, Studio One. Um, so some of the, the features that were brought over from Cubase and I used to use Cubase prior to studio one with pro tools for a long time. And Cubase was a wonderful DAW it really is. I mean, I don't know if it is anymore. I have it. I haven't used it in a long time. I'm sure it's still great. Um, they probably upgraded a lot of their stuff as all DAWs do. Um, the reason why, um, I left Cubase to go to studio one. The only reason why I left is because at the time, um, uh, back in the days when everything was 32 bit, um, the um, Cubase, or excuse me, Studio One was the only DAW at that time that was 64-bit that took advantage of all the horsepower in your machine in my 2009 Mac Pro, where Cubase was not, and neither was Pro Tools back then. That was my original reason for switching, and then once I got into Studio One, I really liked it, and I never turned back, um, but now everything is 64-bit. Another little uh, bit of uh, trivia, we're talking about DAWs, um, people may not realize that Universal Audio's Luna, which is very Pro Tools esque in workflow and in, and in cleanliness of the of the interface and such, <clears throat> actually is um, has Avid design people help design that as well. It's one of the reasons why it's very Pro Tool workflow like, but better. There's some Avid engineers, not all, but part of the team were Avid engineers that helped designing Luna. It's a little piece of trivia for you. Um, okay, so there's our there's our track. So we're gonna look at four tape machines, and we're gonna not just listen to them. I'm gonna take you through them. We're gonna break open the the, the IK Multimedia manual here, so you guys can see the difference. Um, the first one we're gonna take a look at. Now, the first thing I'll say about all these tape machines is that they they sound great. The reason why they're on the master bus and they're not put on every individual track like you would see me do with something like the Slate Digital VTM or some of the other tape machines that are on the market, it's because they're incredibly CPU intensive, incredibly. Um, so for example, let me just, uh, well, let me turn this one on here and let me just show you the performance monitor here in Studio One. Now here's something that's interesting about Studio One 5.4, if you don't know this and you're a Studio One user, and if you should go watch my video anyway, you'd learn this. <laughs> but one of the new features that they have is this thing called plug-in napping. And if I click on show devices, you'll see all the plugins that are there. And what plugin napping is, is if there's no audio playing through the particular plugin or through the song like it isn't right now, you'll see under the devices section, these little, these little uh, half moon icons, 
That means that the plugin is in napping mode. When it doesn't see any audio going through it, it puts it to sleep. So it kind of, it kind of, uh, it, you know, helps preserve or conserve some of your CPU power. So you can see right here, I'm only running at 1%. And that's because we're not playing any audio. But if I just were to play audio through, see, when I turn it on out of bypass mode, it goes to 26%. Okay, so this, the, each one of these plugins has lots. You couldn't put 40 of these in your session. But if I play back a little audio through this quickly. <laughs> Okay, it stays at 26 because it's it's not in bypass mode. If I put it in bypass mode, it goes to nap. Just so you know that. So that's a cool, that's a new feature in Studio 154 for everybody keeping score at home. Okay, so we're gonna look at four tape machines tonight. This one is the Tape Machine 99. Okay, then we're gonna look at, come on now, here we go. This is uh, Tape Machine 80. We're also gonna look at Tape Machine 24, and then last but not least, Tape Machine 440. So let's start with Tape Machine 99 now, because I just can't play the plug and I have to give you a history lesson because that's what I do here. <laughs> so we're gonna go right out to the IK Multimedia website and we're gonna take a look at this so you can kind of know what this thing is modeled after if you don't know anything about tape machines. So which one did I say this one was? We're gonna do... The Tape Machine 99, right? So Tape Machine 99, let's scroll down the Tape Machine 99. Okay, so Tape Machine 99 here is one of these old school reel-to-reels. This is a RevRox PR99 MK2, a stereo professional recorder produced by Studer in the 1980s. It was engineered around a hybrid design that combines the best of discrete op-amp topologies This model offers a very smooth frequency response, especially on bass. So we'll keep that in mind when we listen almost with no trace of typical head bump, okay? Which usually with tape, it usually gives a nice low end uh, bump, in the, especially in the low end. It was a standard for broadcasting classical music. Well, that makes sense. If it doesn't have that head bump phenomenon, it would be used for something where you don't wanna hear that, right? The machine was appreciated by audiophiles for its exceptional sonic quality. So there it is, all in its glory. Great tape machine. Let's listen to it. If I can get it open again, we'll walk through the controls. You hear me on bypass it, okay? So all of their tape machines are kind of laid out the same way. Over here, we can uh, change the tape speed to seven and a half to 15 inches per second, okay? Uh, down here in the left-hand corner, we have our input. We have a reset to reset it to factory default. We have a bias control, a level, high frequency EQ, um, on the repro section or the record heads and then on the play heads. So you have two different, you got a record head and a play head, right? So you have two different levels of high Q, high EQ frequency that you can mess with if you want. We have auto calibration. We have this thing called true stereo. And what true stereo means is that when it's in true stereo mode, it means that there's no difference between the left and the right as far as the way the tape, the way it affects the left and the right signal. When it's not in true stereo mode, if I read that right, I think I got that, I don't have that backwards, there could be some slight variations to the left right signal, which is which is the way tape machine kind of were. Um, and then we're also where you can model the transport, the, the transport section of the tape machine, you could turn that on or off as well. All of these things will just have a little bit of a subtle difference not all that audible, but very subtle differences. And we can flip, we'll flip through these. And then we have an output knob. We also have um, four tape formulas here, the 250, the 450, the 499, and the GP9. <clears throat> Each one of those are gonna kind of go from 250 in a sequential order, will be a little bit more present sounding as it gets to the 456, the 499, and the GP9, it gets a little bit more bottom heavy. We'll listen to that as well. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start on 15 ips. We'll play back this little section of music. We'll hit the inputs. So we're hitting the tape at a pretty good level. We will go ahead and we will uh, turn down the output so we can level match it. And then we'll flip through some of the features. Let's go. Come back. 
So just cycling through the four tape formulas, you really don't hear a, a real big change very subtly because remember, this is more of an audio file tape machine, right? We read in the manual that there is none of that low end bump. It's more transparent. That's the way it was designed. It was used for broadcast boards and classical music where it was very kind of subtle. It'll lop off the top end just a little bit and it really is really more just to compress it and kind of just glue it together. It's not to really, it's not gonna have a lot of tonal shift. Let's just switch, we'll switch back to the 250 and then we'll go to the seven and a half inch per second and we'll flip to the tape formulas and let's see what that does. So you hear the biggest jump between the 250 and the GP9 and the GP9 tape formula, which is pretty much on everybody man everybody's bang is every manufacturer's tape machine plug-in will typically have the GP9 formula. Um, it's my favorite formula. It's the most modern sounding. It's just the one that my ears kind of gravitate towards, but they all sound pretty good. Um, let's, uh, we could mess around with these uh, EQ. Let's turn the true stereo on and off and the transport modeling on and off and let's see what that does. And then we'll just bypass the entire plugin so you can kind of hear what it's doing. Feel away from you, and I'll be fine. Cleaning up the corner, put it back in order. I know I will always have this too. I'm a bit of piece of you. So these uh, these little high uh, high frequency EQs do something. You can actually hear it here on the record head. And the reason why tape machines would have that, just so you know, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with tape machines and the way they kind of work, is the part of the the the, the um, what you kind of lose when you run audio through an analog tape machine is it lops off or shaves off the top end, it rounds off the top and you lose some of the high frequencies. So they put this back to add that back. Okay, so the way tape kind of works is um, when you run, the harder you hit the tape, the more compression, the more saturation you're gonna get, you're gonna get a roll off of the top ends. And again, every tape machine is gonna be a little different on how um, dramatic that effect is, but you're gonna lose some of that. And if you wanna bring it back, you can do that with the high frequency EQ. That's why they give you both on both the playhead and the record head. Come back to life. So again, when you just bypass this on and off, it's very subtle. Now, if you if your ears are trained and you've been doing this a while, if you've been working with me here at Home Recording Made Easy or over at MixingMadeEasy.net, by the way, I'm sure Dave will put a link in the chat for that. We talk a lot about this in depth in our monthly training content. And over time, your ears start to get tuned. You could hear 
very I could hear very clearly what this tape machine does, but it is on the subtle side. So if you're someone who has a difficult hearing the on and off difference with this tape machine, it's okay. It is very subtle, but it's supposed to be subtle. So again, I'll start with it off and I'll turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. So you could just watch the bypass button and you could hear what the tape machine does. <laughs> Okay, so you can hear there again, it's very, very subtle. Now you could see I'm also pushing this thing almost 12 dB and I'm turning down the output 12 dB to compensate. And we're hitting the tape pretty hard here, which is typically how you would use an analog tape machine. Now the reason why people are in the, are really people, some people don't understand why in the analog days in the analog world, you wanted to hit the tape hard. Yes, you wanted the harder you hit the tape, the more saturation, the more color, a little more compression lopping off of the top end, like I said. But the real reason why we would hit the tape hard is to get above the noise floor, to get above the hiss, because tape inherently has a lot of hiss in it. This one, not so much, because this is one of those tape machines that it's, I don't know, is there like a noise reduction to turn it on and off? Um, this one just may be in and of itself, may not have a lot of tape hiss modeled in it because it was a very clean tape machine as we were talking about. This is more of an audio file tape machine. But to get above that hiss and that noise floor, you had to hit tape hard so the music and the loudness of the music would get above the noise floor. That's the real reason for it. And the more you hit that tape, the more goodness you get out of it as well. So that is kind of, again, um, this particular tape machine, again, very different than any other tape machine. It sounds great. Tape Machine 99. It's really, really great. It's got, you know, again, if you want something subtle. If you just want something to kind of glue it together and you don't want a lot of um, saturation, a lot of hype, a lot of low end bump, this may be a tape machine you want to check out. So let's turn that one off and let's go on to the next one. What's the next one we're going to we're going to listen to? Oh, gee, I don't know. This one is going to be the tape machine 80. So let's go back to our user manual and let's learn a little bit about the tape machine 80. All right. Tape machine 80. Here it is. OK, so this is a multi-track tape machine, as you can see. The legendary Studer 880 MK2 and its various rev uh, revisions uh, is an essential part of countless inf influential records engineered and manufactured in Switzerland from 1970 to 1988. It became de facto standard for professional high-end multi-tracking. The 880's sonic signature is a perfect blend between transparency and subtle harmonic enhancement. Okay, so this is a multi-track tape machine. So on, there are really two types of tape machines you would see in the studio typically. You would see something like this, a multi-track tape machine. This particular one is a 16 channel. And I think they might have made 24 channels at one point in time, a 16 channel. And then you would have a two channel or a stereo tape machine. And the way it would work would be is that you would, the way it would work um, is that you would record off the live floor. And before you hit the console, you would hit tape. You would hit a multi-track tape machine. And then after you hit the tape machine, it would go out of the tape machine. It would go into your console, through your preamps, all of that, mixed through the master bus and out to a master um to a two-track tape machine. Okay. So this is a multi-track tape machine. So um this is one of the few companies, well, there's a couple. Universal Audio makes the um the Studer. 800 multi-track tape machine plugin and Slate Digital's VTM, the virtual tape machine is really two plugins in one with the flip of a switch. They modeled the multi-track tape machine and they also modeled the two-track tape machine. And those you could put all across your tracks. Again, with this, if you look at our performance meter, this one would be very challenging to put on all of your tracks because it's 23%, 25% with one instance. 
So if you put tried if you had a 16 track session and you tried to put this on all 16 tracks, you'd have a tough time. Your computer would crap out, at least mine would. Okay, and I got a high power machine here. Okay, so even though it's modeled after that, which is cool, you may be able to put this on four or five instances on this if you just put it on your buses. But then again, this is only one plugin. So if you put any other plugins on your thing, you're gonna have a hard time. So this is really, again, used merely for more of the master bus, at least in my opinion. And again, we have the same kind of layout here, but it, the tape reels are on the bottom instead of on the top. But we have our input here. We have our different tape formulas right here. Same tape formulas as before. This one, we have a 15 ips and a 30 ips as opposed to seven and a half and 15, okay? So um, again, for folks that are new to tape, um, the slower the tape spins, okay, the more compression, a little bit more bottom end you're gonna get, a little bit more lopping of the top end. 30 ips per second, it's gonna be a little bit more open sound, then you're gonna have a little bit less compression, okay? The faster the tape is spinning, all right? And we have all our bias controls, same in the center. And then we have our true stereo transport modeling. So it's all the same controls, just rearranged a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and let's give a listen to this. I'll set it up and we'll give it a listen. I know the seasons about to change. It's changing all around. I know the reasons you arrange. Okay, so you can instantly hear that low end bump a lot more obvious than on the other tape machine. Okay, you can, it's not drastic, but you can hear it, especially on the GP9 formula, just turning the tape machine on and off, you're gonna get that low end bump. That's what tape kind of does. I know the seasons about to change, it's changing all around. I know the reasons you arrange, you're tapping me down. Where does the peacefulness of Okay, so that's on 30 ips per second. Let's go to 15. So again, the tape machine 250, 456, 499, GP9. In the way I kind of think about it in my head is the 250 is more vintage and it gets a little less vintage. And by the time you get to the GP9, it's more modern sounding. That's how I kind of think of it, just for so you guys know. So let's try 15 ips per second and let's cycle through the tapes. I'm all back. Okay, so now if we play with the, the um, high EQ frequency, now this one also has on the playhead, this has also a low frequency EQ and a high frequency EQ on this particular tape machine. And on the record head, it only has a high frequency EQ. So we have low and high here. I know the season's about to change. It's changing all around. I know the reasons you arrange. So the low frequency EQ adds a lot of low end to this. And so maybe what that might be useful for is if the GP9 
wasn't your flavor and you liked maybe some more of the vintage stuff, which tends to be a little less low end in my ear to my ear, you can use the low frequency EQ to kind of add a little bit of that into this tape formula sound that you didn't get from the other tape machine. So again, this transport modeling and the true stereo, true stereo is just that left right dynamic I was telling you about. The tr transport modeling again, it, it's a little bit of an EQ shift. It's very, very subtle. Um, so, you know, I just keep everything on because why not? Um, and really, you can just use the little, you could just use the little EQ. Um, circuits here and then play around with your tape speed and your tape formula and you could dial it in. But just going from on to off, just bypass to enabled, much more audible difference than the last tape machine that we looked at. So big difference there, big difference. And we're using some high-end EQ on that. So that is our Tape Machine 80. Let's see, what's the next one we're gonna listen to? We'll listen to the 24. So let's get our manual out. Let's see what's about the 24. Here we go, Tape Machine 24. So here's another multi-track tape machine. This is of an, MC, an MCI model, JH24. The first produced in 1980, the JH24 was a staple in U.S. studios during the 1980s. It, this completely is transformer-less, right? No transformers. High-performance opto-amp-based design delivers a pristine phase and uh, remarkably true to the source audio performance. This results in a moderate and elegant polish to your music. Okay, so this is another one of those multi-track tape machines. Okay, really cool. So this is going to give us, has no transformers in it like some of the other tape machines obviously do. And this is going to give us a more polished sound according to their website. Really? Okay, let's see. Let's see. Polished sound, maybe you're right. All right, so again, let's uh, turn it on. Let's hear what we got. We'll set it up and we'll rock and roll. Okay, let's go through the controls. So controls again, the same, just you know, look a little different. We have our input here. We have our true stereo and our transport modeling. We have our repro and input section. We have 250, 456, 499, GP9. And then we have 15 and 30 ifs per second as the last tape machine. And then we have our all of our uh, bias controls here. And we also have the low frequency EQ on here as well. Okay. So here we go. Let's take a listen and we'll dial this one in. Okay, so to me, to my ear, there's a, a lot more subtle difference between these four tape formulas, okay, from an EQ perspective. So again, it's, it's a little bit more transparent. It doesn't have that real low end bump like the last tape machine did. Now again, we can add that in using our low frequency here. <laughs> Where will my heart come back to life? 
away from you And I'll be fine Give me nothing corner Put it back in order I know I'll always have this too I want a bit of peace of you Okay, so going from 15 to 30 ips per second, a little bit more compression on the 15 ips, and that's what's going to happen because the tape is moving a little bit slower. And again, we hear that low end bump in this because I used the low end frequency EQ. If you kind of take this out back to where it was, um, you won't really hear it as much. And so it sounds great. It has a little bit of a different sound, but it sounds really cool. And they also have a bunch of presets here, by the way, as well. So you can always go through, save presets. You know, you have a whole bunch of different presets you can always play around with. Um, and so that is Tape Machine 24. So let's listen to our last one here, which is going to be Tape Machine 440. Let's hear, let's learn a little bit about the 440 here. Let's go back up here. Tape Machine 440 must have been the first one. Here it is. Okay. So this is an Ampex 440B. And the dates from the late 1960s delivers an unmistakably source of color that has made this professional and historic, uh, historic mixing and mastering machine a legend. This superb blend of art and technology has power to turn your mixes into finished tracks. Hey, how about that? So this one should have the most color. I would think. Just based on what that just said. Let's see. All right, here we go. So again, everything's laid out the same way. We have uh, little sliders here to change our tape formulas, which is kind of cool. We got a seven and a half and a 15, okay? Um, and so these more older school from the 60s tape machines, they all had seven and a half to 15. They didn't really have 30 ips per second until more of the 80s on these designs. Um, and then again, we have all of our uh, EQ little things here. We have a low frequency EQ here as well. And then we have our true stereo and our transport modeling. So let's give this one a whirl and let's see what this one sounds like. Here we go. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to seven and a half uh, inches. You just can't click on it. You actually got to take the thing and slide it, which I wish you could just click on the tape formulas, but you can't. So you got to kind of be a little clever with your mouse or your trackball here. So let's go to seven and a half. <laughs> Put it back in order I know I'll always have this too 
changing all around. Okay, so it's really cool. Sounds really great. I mean, it's not really overly hyped, which is great. Um, it's kind of subtle, which is really the way it should be. It shouldn't be way overhyped. It sounds really good. <clears throat> so we have four very distinct but subtle between the difference between the four different tape machines here. So now let's um let's do this. We could probably could we get them all on the screen here? I don't know if we can do that. We could try. We could try running them all. Oh, I gotta pin this right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on. Oh come on now. Let's so uh, let's see if we can get them all on the screen. I could just do it right from the master bus, but you guys probably want to see the little tapey, the tape thing, right? So let's see if we can get these up here and uh, let's see if we can switch from one to the other. And again, the settings aren't exactly the same. We, we realize that, right? So let's just try to, can we do this? Can we do it? Oh my goodness, we can do it. Look at that. You don't need to see me. It'll cover me up a little bit, but that's okay. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start in the top. We're going to bypass these other. We'll stop. We'll go from left to right. So we'll start with our top left here, tape machine 24. Then we'll go over to, um, to the right here, tape machine 99. So we'll do the two top ones and then the two bottom ones. And we'll go tape machine 440. And then we'll go tape machine 80. And if one is super loud than the other, they're way off. I'll try to balance them as we go. And just keep your eyes on the little bypass buttons. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start with our tape machine 24. And let's see what the differences are. I know the reasons you And let's just put them all on the same tape speed here. We'll start with 15 because not all of these have 30. So let's do 15 ips just because. 15. Okay, here we go. Okay, so there's the four. I mean, they're different, but they're similar, right? I mean, they're not way different. Someone was asking about CPU. Let's see, we have all four of these. Now, because we don't have anything playing, we're in that mode right now, but we're running at 25%. So if I, let's put them all on. Ooh, and we'll unbypass them all. We'll sound like, probably sound like total hell, but let's just see what happens to the CPU. So we're gonna put them, let me put this down here somewhere. So we're gonna, we have to unbypass all of them in order to do this. Oh, we gonna make it 71. Oh, we're at 92. Okay. So, and some of this also too, I'm running OBS, right? So I'm running software, other software. So we're running at 94, 95%. We haven't played any audio yet. Uh, it's all in, all tape machines are on and we'll see if this craps out. I hope it doesn't crap out our live stream. I don't think it will. If we get some really weird artifacts, I'll shut it right off. So let's just see what happens. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, we get all kinds of crackling. See that? Okay, so there's a great example of why you can't put these across all of your tracks, like if you use the multi-track one because it craps it out. Now, I'm using an 8-core processor with 64 gigs of RAM in it. Granted, it's from 2017. It's an iMac Pro. It's not like some of the newer machines that are super fast, but you'd still have the same issue. You can use one or two of these in a session. That's it. But that's really what they're made for. Okay, so there's the CPU usage, just so you know. Okay, so they take about 25% per machine when they're in bypass mode or, or um, then they're going to go to nap if you have 5.4 Studio One, so you don't have to worry about that. So there is R4 IT, IK Multimedia Tape Machines. Again, they're really cool. If you don't have any tape machine plugins in your collection, I recommend that you at least have one. Um, this bundle's kind of cool because for 200 bucks you get all four, and it's the only four tape machines you'll ever need. You'll never need another tape machine plugin again. So go check out the... Um, Oh, Dave just put in the check. See, Dave's on top of it. Go check it out at Sweetwater. You can download it right away. Um, Sweetwater is the best place to buy plugins, and you'll buy them, pay the same price you pay on IK Multimedia, um, and you get better customer service, especially if you have a problem. So um, you can go pick those up. Now, you can just pick up one for 99 bucks. I think, on the website on Sweetwater, um, or you can get all four for 199 So if you don't have tape machine plugins, get this bundle. You'll never have to buy another bundle again. Um, they are some of the best tape machine plugins I own and we've done live streams and I've done videos and stuff on all the other ones the slate the slate digital virtual tape machine is fantastic as well I think these are better um, the universal audio one stuff I really like but if you don't have universal audio hardware that doesn't mean anything to you um, the the waves Abbey Road j37 people ask me about from time to time that's great too but that's not one of these four tapes actually the tape 440 is is probably more like the J37. It's in that same 60s vibe kind of a thing. Um, but the J37's got its own special sound to it as well. The Abbey Road, that's a really good one too. And you can get that on you can get that on sale for 30 bucks at waves.com. You can actually also buy that at sweetwater.com for 25 bucks, the Waves J37. That's a great tape machine as well. But you may want to check these out. They're really cool. So I hope you enjoyed uh, that. Let's go back to the chat room here. If you guys have any questions, I'd love to uh, to help or talk or chat. We got about 20 or 18, 20 people still floating around here, which is great. Let me close down my Studio One here for a second. That was a lot of fun. Really cool. So let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have anything you want to ask or talk about, because that's what I'm here for. Again, make sure you check all the uh, links that Dave's putting in the uh, in the chat throughout the night. Again, if you're a Studio One user, mixing in Studio One made easy. Um, the new course from this year, um, go check go check that out. It's 50% off. Um, it's got, you know, it's, I don't know, five, six hours long. And it also shows you how to master in Studio One, which is really cool. Um, so go check that out for sure. Let's see. Any questions? Any questions at all? If you don't have any questions, I'm just going to go get something to eat. Let's see. Let me just scroll up and make sure I didn't miss anything here. I don't think I did. If I did, if you did ask a question, um, please ask it again, just so I can make sure I don't forget you. Uh, Jim wants to know if anyone tried the SSL Fusion plugins yet. I haven't tried them yet. Um, maybe at one point I will, but I have a real SSL Fusion I'm still playing with. Um, so I haven't tried those yet. Um, but those are cool. Those just came out. There's like, I think three of them, which will, which model the different sections of an SSL fusion. At one point I'll probably check them out. Hey, uh, Andy, how are you brother? Um, I'll probably check them out just to compare them to the fusion just because why not? Um, at one point I'll probably demo them. Uh, Jimmy Farmer says your anniversary dinner reservations are in an hour. Oh, cool, man. Well, that's good. Jimmy, go get, go get some dinner and go, uh, enjoy your anniversary. Okay, one last call now. Ask any questions that you have. If not, I'm going to get out of here. We've been on here about an hour, which is really cool. Um, if there's any other kind of live stream topics you want to uh, see in the future, let me know, either in this chat tonight, leave a comment in the section below. If you're watching this on the replay, because it will be up on YouTube, if there's any other live stream ideas, demos, things you want to do, any specific live stream topics, leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll, uh, I'll take a look at it, and I'll put together a little punch list of things that you guys want to see and chat about, and I'll try to bring that to you in another live stream. That's what I'm going to do. All right, so if we don't have any other questions, we are going to head out of here. I want to thank you so very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed those IK Multimedia tape machines. Be sure to go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, 
Make sure you get on the email list if you're not already, because we're always uh, got deals and sales on courses and Black Fridays coming up not too long from now. If you're not on the email list, you won't be able to take advantage of all the deals that I typically have at Black Friday. That's only for my email subscribers. It's not for the general public. And make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to all the social media platforms. And don't forget to go check out Mixing Music Analog, the YouTube channel, if you're into working with analog gear in a hybrid uh, mixing setup. So until the next time, I will see you guys later. Take care, everybody.